Welcome to Plasma Process Group. Thanks for joining us as we put together a radio frequency neutralizer. Let's call it an RFN for short. Please refer to our website for tech notes, drawings, manuals, and other resources regarding your products. This procedure assumes all parts have been cleaned, inspected, and are ready to be used. Let's begin with the antenna lead. Place a clip about three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the antenna. Place a male insulator onto the long end of the copper antenna, male end up. Find the beveled edge of the antenna mount plate and face it up. Find the non-threaded hole that fits a number two insulator and thread the antenna through it. Partially fit the collector to the discharge chamber. Custom size the insulators for a tight fit. Refer to the RFN tech notes on our website. Remove the collector from the discharge chamber. Insert the discharge chamber through the mount plate and carefully twist into the coil of the antenna. Continue until the antenna has reached the top thread of the discharge chamber and the end of the thread is aligned with the 440 hole in the mount plate. Hello DC, you have a tip for us? Hello. Try not to deform the antenna. Also, try to keep the discharge chamber clean from copper transfer between the threads. Install the gas isolator to the collector tab first, then the back plate, then the collector. Align the tab with the opening on the collector and the collector centered on the back plate. Tighten the collector nut. Make sure the collector remains flush to the back plate, aligned and centered. Now it is time to insert the collector into the discharge chamber at a specific position. Align the left edge of the collector gap with the threaded hole for the antenna lug on the mount plate. Press the collector into the discharge chamber. If the insulators are the right size, then this will be and should be difficult to do by hand. The back plate should fit flush with the discharge chamber. Anything to watch for, DC? Yes, if the insulators are too wide, they will be crushed in this process. Install the back plate clamp ring so that the flat section faces the antenna lead. The longest of the three screws should go to the hole where the antenna lug will be secured. Tighten in an alternating pattern and then loosen the longer screw until only an eighth inch protrudes. Add a male insulator onto the antenna on top of the mount plate. Remove the slack and secure the insulator with a snap clip. Tighten the antenna clockwise working out the excess space in the coil. It must be tight to the discharge chamber or you will experience tuning and stability issues. If the lug on the antenna doesn't reach the screw, use needle nose pliers to pull it there if possible. Make sure the coils are evenly spaced. Tighten the antenna lug mount screw. Secure with a nut and make sure the flat edge of the nut faces the coil. Check the shape of the lower antenna lead. It should be as perpendicular to the coils as possible. Use needle nose pliers to crimp the snap clip so that the antenna will stay tight. Now measure the gap from the last coil to the bottom of the discharge chamber. It should measure between 60 thousandths and 70 thousandths of an inch. Install the RFN mount bracket to the back body and check the threaded clamp collars for screw galling. Tap and clean the body if necessary. Locate the antenna hole in the back body and feed the antenna through it. Now let's build the isolated keeper post in this hole. Thanks for the arrow, DC. You're welcome. Add a lock washer to the keeper screw, then a cup and a male insulator. On the other end, add a flat insulator, a cup, and a nut.
Make sure the leads all have knurled nuts at the end. Select the keeper lead, it's the longer of the two. Insert the keeper lead through the back body, using the first hole counterclockwise from the antenna. Insert the lead through the antenna mount plate. Start with a lock washer. Thread the screw through the lug. Add the cup, then the male insulator. Bend the lead so that it fits into the deepest cutaway on the front body flange. Secure the keeper lead to the front body using screws, insulators, and cups. Position the lug so it won't touch the body or the antenna when finished. Install the keeper plate. Align the antenna mount plate with the front body and fasten with standoffs. Bend the lug down roughly 45 degrees. This will allow for a tighter installation. Thread the collector lead into the back body. Install the collector lead to the collector tab parallel with the clamp ring. And now back to the antenna. Place the flat insulator over the antenna lead. Thread the antenna with wire beads tapered side up until there is about a half inch to 9 sixteenths of copper exposed at the end. Make sure the knurled nut is on the antenna lead shield. Open up the shield by pushing both sides inward. Slowly work the shield over the antenna. Insert one bead into the end of the shield, tapered side down. It should protrude about an eighth of an inch. Set the position of the connector to leave about sixty thousandths of space between it and the last insulator. The set screw may have to be filed shorter so that it won't protrude past the connector when it's tight. Now test for a tight fit from the connector to a number 12 Deutsch pin. Make sure the connector grips the pin. Slide the back body down to the standoffs and secure. Push the ferrules of each lead down below the clamp collars. Install the clamp collars, alternating between screws a few turns at a time. The RFN is now ready for testing. Good job.